I said, Amen. Amen. Dear Pastor, I am so glad that God is asking you or using you. Can't get riches rich here, but one of boots. I am writing about my experience, and my prayer is that some will benefit from it. Experience, they say, is the best teacher, but I think it is better to learn from the Word of God than to learn from mystics. Isn't that true? The latter hurts and could be very damaging. I got born again in my early 20s, and before this I had had more than my fair share of relationships. I was very experienced, in quotes and unquotes, in things of the world. When I was about four months in the Lord, I met this guy. He was everything I wanted in a man. What in the world did you want in a man? It was not love at first sight. In fact, my first impression of him was that he was too arrogant, probably because of his good looks. We later got to be friends and we fell in love with each other. In fact, we were thinking of getting married within a year. He was an unbeliever and thought I was being fanatical about my beliefs. I knew I couldn't give up my faith but then I still wanted him. He kept telling me to pray. The unbeliever. He kept telling me to pray and that God will surely save him. Isn't that terrible? He knows he needs salvation and he tells somebody to have the assignment. Oh no. And that God will surely save him because the Bible says, he's quoting scripture now, because the Bible says he does not desire for men to perish. He said he wouldn't stop me from serving God the way I want. All he wanted was for me to be his wife. The same story. Some ladies are familiar with this. We kept on seeing each other for about a year. Then I finally came to my senses. No, you just allowed your spirit now. See, your senses told you all the time it was okay. You didn't come to your senses. It was the spirit that came alive. Praise the Lord. All right, but I understand what you're saying. Then she says, I finally came to my senses and knew I had to break it off. I wrote to him and did. I went on my knees to God and cried out my heart asking for forgiveness. And according to his word, I know he did. But I was weighed down by my guilt. Eventually, I came to see you, Pastor. I don't really remember this lady. I don't know who she is. But she says she came to see me. And uh, you prayed for me. It was like a burden was lifted off me. God slowly began to bind my broken heart. There are times I still think of him and then I pray that God would touch his heart. Not because I want to go back to him, but because I don't want him to go to hell. Brothers and sisters, there might be some of you who are in this kind of mess right now. You can't be in a relationship with a non-Christian and expect him or her to get saved through you. You are probably the worst person to get him or her to heaven. Hmm. Did you hear that? For as long as you are together, his or her heart will be burdened or hardened because there is no difference between what you are doing and what an unbeliever will do. Sisters especially remember that in the world system, nothing goes for nothing. I hope you heard that. No matter how caring or how generous an unbeliever may be, he is not for you. I was not enticed with money or any such thing. My sin was falling in love with the wrong person. Yes, it is possible to fall in love with the wrong person. One other thing was that I was so confident 
that nothing like that could happen to me. I was learning so much from you, Pastor, and experiencing God's move in my life like I never would have thought. I thought nothing could shake me. I felt I was in control. But in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12, the Bible says, Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth, take heed lest he fall. Don't have confidence in your flesh or in your strength. I had a weak point, but I felt that it was nothing I couldn't handle. I know now that I should have talked to God about it, and he would have given me his strength for the time I would need it. My weak point was my sexual desire. Before I got born again, I didn't see anything wrong with going to bed with a guy I liked. Did you hear that? She said, before I got born again, I didn't see anything wrong with going to bed with a guy I liked. It's not only men, it, listen to this, she's making an observation here. It's not only men of the world who have one night stands. Women do too. I was highly active sexually before I got born again. And the longest I had been without a man was probably about one week. So it was kind of tough on me having to go without for about five months. Just five months. And she says it was tough on her. <laughs> Did you hear that? She wasn't even married. And it was tough on her to go without a man for five months. Five months. Just five months. Wow. When the temptation came, I succumbed to his desires, to the desires of my flesh, sorry. And as, as if that wasn't enough, I had to fall in love with him too. The Bible says we should renew our minds. I hadn't renewed my mind as a then concerning, concerning that and didn't really know what God's word said about it. It's good to learn about faith righteousness and so on but there are some basic things that we assume the people know don't fall into this kind of mess it happened about three years ago and now i can look back and thank god for bringing me out thank you so much pastor because i know that you care about your flock yours in christ praise the lord why don't you give her a big hand thank god she came out Hallelujah. At last she came out. Amen. Amen. And it's great to be out of that mess. Now she's telling others, come out. Thank God. Hallelujah. 